It's doing it. I can't. I think it's about time that I make a respectably powerful cycloidal actuator. Something a little more refined than I've done in the past. Something that could maybe be used in a robotic arm in the future. I've got these beefy NEMA 23 stepper motors. These are rated for 178 ounce inches. So these should be a good base to start off of. I'm gonna be using some different manufacturing techniques for this one, so it should be a lot of fun. My NEMA 23 stepper motors have these round shafts, which is not ideal. Since there's no D shaft or a key or anything like that, uh, attaching stuff to it can be pretty difficult. So in order to rigidly attach something to the shaft, I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. I'm going to try and drill a hole all the way through it so that I can stick a pin in it. So the shaft is, of course, still in the motor. Um, it's a stainless steel shaft, which is pretty hard, and it's perfectly round, so it could be easy to slip off. Um, all of that is to say that this should be difficult. Um, I brought my bench shop power supply out here. So I've got an amp and a half running through each of these phases. Should hold it in place. Oh, come on. I don't have another two millimeter bit, but I do have an 80 thou bit, which is pretty much exactly two millimeters. Come on, go through there. There we go, nice. All right, here are all of my parts. Everything individually has been made, now I just need to actually assemble it. And of course I've got my NEMA 23 stepper motor here, and then I've I've made this Arduino RAN uh, stepper rotor driver. So if I turn on my power supply, the motor will rotate. It's a bit crunchy and, and creates some really nasty vibration, but it'll be fine for testing. Oh, and I've also ordered these M3 countersunk screws that'll be pretty important in keeping everything together. But the first thing I wanna do in assembly is I wanna to put together this big output bearing. These two aluminum plates are gonna act as end caps, kind of, and then this 3D printed piece is going to go in the middle, kind of sandwich there. They're going to go around the bearing like that. So first I'm gonna hammer in four of these pins. These are gonna be the output pins into my 3D printed piece. There's a whole bunch of holes in here and there's four holes that don't go all the way through. That's where the pins are going in. 
And to quote Adam Savage's book, every tool is a hammer. So my pins are in there. Now I'm going to try and take my bottom cap and get, the, get these pins through the appropriate holes in here. The aluminum cap helps to keep these pins going straight out. Some of them are still bending inwards a little bit, and I'm hoping that'll adjust itself once it actually gets in the mechanism, but maybe not. So now I can take this, push it inside the bearing here, just a little snug, that's good. Now I have these hexagonal holes in the 3D printed piece. Those are there so that I can stick in these M4, um, M4 lock nuts. So with these lock nuts in here, once I have the other cap on, um, I'll be able to use M4 screws to go through it and, and hold on to the output. Now the top piece can go on, and you'll notice that the top piece has these countersunk holes in it. Up until very recently, I've never designed anything with countersunk screws or with tapping, but I've started doing some stuff with it and I've really been enjoying it. In this bottom piece, I have these four holes here, and all of them are tapped for M3, then I have the countersunk holes on top that correspond to those holes. So this will go on top, and then I can just run some M3 screws through there to clamp everything together, make it one continuous piece. So I'll grab some M3 screws, uh, maybe the eight millimeter ones. I think I'm actually gonna need to use the 10 millimeter ones. So I'll drop them in their holes. Now I just need to screw them together. Basically one continuous piece now. Got the pins on the bottom. The ends of the screws come out a little bit. I might need to grind those down. And then we've got these four holes on top. I can take an M4 screw and screw it into those because that's where the lock nuts are. And that's how I'll be able to attach things to the output. So now that I have that together, I need to worry about the actual motor. You'll remember that I drilled a hole in the motor shaft here. I made this small two millimeter diameter pin that should fit in this hole, and that will correspond to another hole in my 3D printed eccentric spacer here. So I should be able to slip on the eccentric spacer, put in the pin, and it'll be locked there. Then I can put the bearing over it. It'll keep the pin from coming out. It should be super rigid. There it goes. All right, the pin is good and in there, so the eccentric spacer should be locked in place. Now I can take my, my, my bearing and pop it on over. I forgot I need to put this on there before I can, before I can do this. So I'm putting on the 3D printed base of it first, then the cycloidal disc, and then I can push the bearing in. So everything's kind of locked in there now. So now I'm going to want to fix my, uh, my cycloidal disc here to the eccentric bearing. And I'll do that again with some tapping and some countersunk screws. So you can see that there's a recess in that white cycloidal disc there with some holes in it. Those four holes in that recess are all tapped all the way through. Again, M3. And the reason I had to put this cycloidal disc on first is because the bottom of this disc has a lip on it, which you won't be able to see. So that lip will go on the bottom side of this eccentric bearing. Now I've got this aluminum piece with four corresponding holes, the same shape as that recess, which has another lip on it that'll clamp onto the top of that piece so everything can be held together with those screws. So I'll press this guy into that recess and I'll take four more of my M3 screws and screw them in there. I won't be able to torque it down too tight because this is just plastic threads here. And also this cycloidal disc, this material is Delrin. Um, I wanted to use Delrin because I know it's a good bushing material, so it should lower friction a little bit. Which one do I want to use though? So there is a bit of an issue here. This, uh, this aluminum piece is not quite going all the way down. So there's a little bit of room um, in, the, in the Z axis for this like, little disc to move along the, uh, the bearing. It's very little though, and I don't think that will contribute to slop in the mechanism. Should be fine, hopefully. But it does look pretty cool, look at that. 
So now I need to get the pins in here in the base frame. So this 3D printed piece, you can see that there's holes all along the rim there. Um, those are four millimeter holes that will allow for these pins to go in them. And these pins are what will make up the, the outer ring. So there's 21 pins that need to go in here. I think hypothetically, um, I could put in as few as three pins and it would still be the exact same mechanism. Like nothing would, would change if everything was perfect. So I, if I wanted to reduce friction, I think it could be as simple as just removing the pins and then it shouldn't affect the actual mechanism. All right, all of the pins are in. Um, before we actually get the top on here, I'm going to stick in these M5 screws to clamp down the, the, uh, the base here, get it turning, or see if it will turn. See if it, the mechanism will actually work before we close everything up. All right, I've got two of them in here. Let's see if I can actually make this thing turn. The, the driver is set to go at uh, 100 RPMs, I think. Crossing my fingers. <gasps> it's doing it. It's totally doing it. When it does it, I can feel the, the plastic shifting around a little bit, which is not great. It seems like it's working so far. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna take these screws back out. So now I can take my bearing here and hopefully these four pins should engage with the four holes here. And it feels like it is, seeing as how this is not turning. So now I can take my end cap here, that's this guy, um, and I can stick it right there. You'll notice that this has a lip on the inside of it. That'll go over the edge of the bearing here, so it'll clamp everything down. So now everything will be rigidly held in place. All right, parts of this of this end cap is bowing a little bit. You can probably see it, which is somewhat concerning. But let's see if it actually works. Whew. Kind of nervous. I'm afraid that things are too rigidly held in place and I didn't leave enough tolerances and it's not actually gonna move. But let's try it. Three, two, one. Ooh, uh, eh. Nope, that's not good. That was not good. Okay, this is definitely not working. I am the, it, it's, it's too rigid. The, uh, the motor cannot overcome the friction in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it back apart and this, I'm gonna take this this base 3D printed piece and those holes that are in there, I'm going to drill them out more. I'm gonna drill them out by like half a millimeter, I think. So each of those pins will have room to move around a little bit. I think that'll give me a little more room and hopefully I can get this thing to turn smoothly. Okay, so I have drilled out those four millimeter holes to be four and a half millimeter holes. And I also ground down the uh, the ends of these screws that came out the other side of the bearing. So let's try it out. Three, two, one. There we go. I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit on this uh, on my driver. So now we're running 200 RPMs on the input. You can clearly see that the output is a lot less than that. Specifically, it is 20 times less than that. You can see that the uh, the input shaft of the motor is ticking out a little bit right there. And then of course, this whole plate here is the output rotation. When I run it, you can clearly see that the input is running a lot faster than the output. You can hear that it's just the littlest bit crunchy. I think that's from the, uh, the pins kind of rolling around in their oversized holes. But it's not too bad that in, in that regard. The bigger issue though is with the output rotation speed. In an ideal cycloidal drive, the output rotation will be continuous as with any gearbox. I don't think I'm quite getting that with this one though. So when I run it, you can see that the output rotation speed is 
inconsistent. From one moment to the next, it's a little bit faster or slower. So it's certainly not perfect, but as far as torque goes, it seems it seems like it does pretty well. So I stuck these M4 screws in there, just so there's something for me to grab onto. Um, and it's it's definitely not at all back drivable, which is what I expected. There's quite a lot of friction in here. I turn the speed back down, I'm gonna turn it on, and I'm just gonna see if I'm able to stop it. <laughs> I definitely, oh, it's so strong. I can't. <clears throat> nope. So I could not even slow it down. Um, so it's definitely pretty strong. That also was not full current. That was like 75% of the max current. And that extra crunchiness you heard there, um, that was not the mechanism. That's just the driver. Um, I, again, I just threw this driver together and it, at lower RPMs, it, it has that bad sound. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. The main thing I was trying to get out of this is high torque and clearly it does have a lot of torque. Not to mention that it just looks cool. It's not bulky or anything. It's pretty streamlined with the motor itself. And it's gonna be pretty easy to mount whatever I want to the face of this. But again, there are those issues. The problem with the with the pins kind of rolling around in their space, I think I can fix that pretty easily. I just need to adjust how far all of the pins are apart from each other. And that's just something you gotta you gotta dial in a little bit because it'll depend on how the 3D printer handles those kind of small, precise measurements. So that's something I can play with and fix. The other issue, the big issue, with the non-constant output rotation speed, um, that is a problem with the, the output pins. So the pins that were coming out of this bearing piece, they were, they were kind of cockeyed, um, which I mentioned earlier. I believe that's the reason that it's not totally constant. So if those pins were perfectly perpendicular to the plate, then I'm guessing that that out output rotation would be a lot smoother. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's really an easy way for me to do that. I, mean, I might need to redesign how this thing goes together. So I think I'm going to leave this here for now. Um, I'm going to try and uh, address some of these issues, mainly the fact that these pins don't want to be straight perpendicular. I'm not going to test the torque of this yet. Maybe I'll do it in another video, uh, mainly just because I don't know how exactly I should do some torque testing. I Because I don't think I can do, I can't do a stall torque test because it's not at all back drivable. But I'll figure something out. Honestly, I think this, this is capable of like pulling a car. So might be able to do a cool demonstration like that. So stay tuned if you uh, would be interested in some testing of this. If you would like the CAD files that I use to make this cyclotal actuator, those will be made available via my Patreon. There will be links in the description for that. This guy is not quite robotic arm material, um, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get it to that point and we can do something cool with it. So hopefully you enjoyed something here. Um, that's all I have for now, so bye.